Welcome back to the AZ140 study guide for your WVD specialty certification. And in this episode, we're gonna get into all the things around your FS Logics profiles. Let's get into it. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. In our last episode, we planned for our FS Logic storage, and now that you understand all of that, we can plan for the profiles that will go on that storage. So we need to understand what a profile is, the options of our profiles, and how they can all be configured, along with the best practices. So let's start by talking about what FS Logic's profiles do. They are designed so that you can roam your Windows profiles from one virtual machine to another. And perhaps you've used a user profile disk or roaming user profile in the past. FS Logix is very similar, but superior in my opinion, in areas of performance, OneDrive integration, additional folders, folder exclusions, just to name a few. And your profile will be stored as a virtual hard drive, and that will be located on a SMB file share in Azure. And with that comes a lot of native functionality. Things like native backup, disaster recovery, scale, performance, and we covered all that stuff in our last episode. Now, when your user logs on, the profile that's stored in that SMB file share as a virtual hard drive will be dynamically attached to the session host virtual machine. Once the profile is attached to the VM, it appears and functions exactly like a native user profile. So what does all that mean for you? It basically no longer matters which virtual machine your user lands on in your host pool because all of their files and settings will come with them and those files and settings think that they're all part of a normal standard local Windows profile and everybody's happy. And this also means that when you need to upgrade your VMs and replace them with newer models or you've lost a VM for some reason, no worries because your user data is safely stored somewhere else. And the next VM that they go to log on to, their profile will be mounted and they're good to go. Now there are lots of different features in FS Logics, and if you've used it in another kind of VDI environment, you might be thinking that you should implement it the same way in WVD, but I want you to think differently. So let's talk about the specific things you need to consider when planning your profiles. And first off, there are two different profile containers in FS Logics: user profiles and office profiles. Now, if you've seen the other two deep dive videos I did on FS Logix, you'll know that in Windows Virtual Desktop, you really don't need this Office profile. Now, there could still be a few reasons why you ultimately want it in your environment, but you really don't need it because all that Office data is inside your user profile. So what kind of data are we talking about? Well, it's the persistent data that makes your user profile unique. It's the files that are on your desktop, your documents, pictures, music, videos, but it also contains configuration information like desktop settings, persistent network connections, application settings, and don't forget about all of that office profile data from things like OneDrive, OneNote, Outlook, SharePoint, Skype, and Teams. Basically, it's everything that gives your users the look and feel of their Windows experience and all their personal data. So now that we know all of that, you should also know that this is the default implementation of FS Logics to only use a user profile. However, as I said, you can separate that Office stuff into its own profile. So what's inside there? The Office profile is made up of cached data. And one of the best ways to illustrate that is with email. Your email lives on the Exchange email server. But to make performance of the Outlook client a better experience for the user, Outlook can cache that email locally. And that Outlook cache would live inside the Office profile. And it's the same basic principle for Teams or any of the other Office apps that I mentioned. And since these two profiles are different kinds of data, persistent and cache data, you might want to separate them to be more efficient. Because separating them means you could put them on different file shares, which could be made up of different sizes and performance characteristics. This would also allow you to protect that data differently. For example, your user profile should be backed up. It should be replicated in case of disaster recovery. The Office stuff does not. It is cache data. And if something happens and you lost your Office profile, nobody's gonna care because the data is just gonna re-download from the server and cache again. This also frees you from having to manage the Office profiles. Now, both the user and Office profiles will grow over time, that's just what they do. But when a user profile gets too large, you need to do maintenance on it to shrink it. 
And there's a link right here to a tool that Jim Moyle developed, and that'll help you to automate the process of cleaning up your user profile. So big thanks to Jim for that one. But your office profiles, you don't really need to do that at all. So that all sounds like pretty good stuff. So why would you not want to use the office profile? You know, why is the delete function of FS Logix to only have a user profile? Well, like I said, for one, all this data really lives here already by default. So adding the office profile into the mix means you have now more steps, more configurations, more management, and more troubleshooting. And there is also a way to have the best of both worlds by not having this cache, but also not keeping that data in your user profile. And in my deep dive videos that I mentioned, I show you how to do exclusions, which is where you can take things like the team's cache data and just not have it included or protected inside your user profile at all, which is great because Teams in particular is about five gigs worth of storage. And who wouldn't want to save five gigs for every user that they have? So now that you understand the two different kinds of profiles, let's talk about attaching them to your WVD systems. Now this happens in two different ways. The first one is called VHD locations. And what that basically means is that when you read or write any data to your profile, you are communicating directly with the file share. Now this is very different from how Cloud Cache works. Cloud Cache will actually create a little hidden space on the C drive and perform all of the writes locally. Once those writes have been written, then they will replicate out to the file share. And both of these will give you the option to write to multiple shares so that you have some measure of redundancy. Cloud Cache, however, gets an upper hand here. Since it's writing all the data on the session host itself and then replicating to storage, you could look at it more as a disaster recovery tool. Because in VHD locations, if you lost the file share, all of your users would lose their profiles. Now, when they go to log back in, FS Logix would see that they can't access the file share anymore, and it would go to the secondary share that you have in VHD locations, and they could get back to work. In the cloud cache scenario, it would be like nothing happened. Yes, you would lose connection to the file share because it's gone, but all of the writes still happen locally. So it would see that the primary share no longer exists, and it would just make the secondary, the new primary, until the original primary came back online. And then it would take care of making sure that they're all in sync. So CloudCache does quite a lot. And because of that, that's the one downside of CloudCache is that it does take longer for each user to log on to their session by a couple seconds. Now, the one thing to consider here is that if the outage happens for too long and you don't have any secondary shares, couldn't you fill up the C drive? Well, in theory, yes, you could. But like I said already, the easy fix is to have more than one file share. And if you're doing disaster recovery in your scenario, you should have that set up already. So no problem. But another thing to consider in Cloud Cache is local C drive performance. In Azure, all drives have a specific size, and that size gives them certain performance characteristics. So all things being equal, 10 users with Cloud Cache writing their profile data to the C drive will have half as much impact as 20 users would. I mean, that's just simple math. So if you're thinking with going with Cloud Cache and are planning on some high density numbers, consider the size of your C drive. You may need to bump it up so that you get the performance locally that you need. And if you might be thinking at this point, well, why don't I just get another drive and put that on the system and have Cloud Cache right there? I mean, that'd solve the problem of not taking down the C drive, right? And yes, you would be correct. However, I don't generally recommend this because having another disk in the mix means more management cost, and it's just one more thing that may go wrong. And why would you do that to solve the problem when you could, in your provisioning templates that I'm sure you're using and automating, you could just change a single number and increase the size of your C drive to whatever levels of performance you want, and then you don't have to think about it. So let's switch gears here a little bit because there are three different kinds of host pools which means there could be three different types of users. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the best practice here is to have one host pool to one file share. So speaking of host pools, we of course have our pooled desktop host pools, remote application host pools, and personal host pools. Now, generally speaking, personal desktop users don't need FS Logix. Because remember, the purpose of FS Logix is to allow your users to go from VM to VM and have their profile follow them. And for personal users, this is just not the case because that user has been assigned to a single dedicated VM 
just for them. And they're gonna log on to that same machine all the time. So their profile doesn't have to go anywhere, so they really don't need that. And I did go deep on a section of FS Logics that's called concurrent connections in my other videos. So that's not a feature that I'm really gonna spend any time on here. And I'll just say that even though it is fully supported, concurrent connections are highly discouraged in WVD because I said the best practice is to have a unique file share for each host pool. But let's move on and talk about remote app host pools. Should you use FS Logix here? That's really gonna depend on the applications that you're hosting. See, there's two different kinds of applications, basically speaking. Those that are presented as is, and those that can be personalized and configured. Take a web browser, for example. You don't need to customize a web browser for it to work. All of the configurations and extensions could even be set up by IT centrally for everybody. However, you can have a more personalized experience logging into that web browser that gives you your own look and feel and your favorite bookmarks and all that stuff. And if you want that second experience, the only way to preserve that is to have a profile that maintains that data. So always remember to consider your applications when thinking about remote apps and your profiles. Then we have our pooled desktop users, and this is generally the FS Logix hero solution. But I'll also say that it depends on what the users are doing. For example, if your WVD environment is set up for nothing more to be a jump host into your existing environments, then no profile needed. In fact, if you're creating a jump host environment, you should protect that jump host and lock it down with something like AppLocker so that the users can only start the applications that they need to function as a jump host, like PuTTY or RDP. But that's another episode. So let's shift gears again and talk about antivirus. Whenever you mount any kind of drive, whether that's a USB drive or a virtual hard drive over an SMB share, the local system is going to want to scan that with your antivirus tool. That just helps keep the system safe. However, in the case of FS Logix, if you're doing that, then you are actually causing the entire user logon process to be slower, as well as impacting every user who's already on the machine because the CPU is going to look at the antivirus as a high intensive process, and it's gonna dedicate all the resources it can to antivirus scanning. Now, of course, you could tweak that, but there's a better way to deal with this. And that is through setting up antivirus exclusions for FS Logix. Now, hear me out. These are the list of things that you'd wanna exclude no matter what the antivirus tool is that you're using. But don't misunderstand, you should absolutely be scanning your profiles. We just don't want it to happen when the user is logging on to WVD. Those scans should be done at the file share level separately. And the host itself should be excluding FS Logix as well as virtual hard drives. So that way the performance of WVD stays up and your environment stays secure. Now the list of all of this, don't worry about copying it, is down in the resource section below along with the other links for today's episode. And if you're using a antivirus tool like Windows Defender or Endpoint Configuration Manager, this can all be implemented through policy. And with all that knowledge out of the way, we have one last thing to talk about in today's episode, and that is the best practices that you need to be aware of. Now, I would memorize these because there is a test. And of course, there are many other settings than what I'm about to tell you, and that is linked in the description as well. So you can go to the FS Logix doc and look up all of those things. But the very first one that I'll mention here is called Delete Local Profile When VHD Should Apply. Now, the reason for this is because in Windows profile logons, sometimes things go wrong. Maybe something happened where the user didn't have the right permissions to FS Logix and they could not mount or create a profile. But for whatever reason, the user ended up with a local profile on that particular VM. Now, you don't wanna to have to do maintenance of checking around on every virtual machine if Sally's profile is there. So this setting in FS Logix will do that for you. Anytime Sally would go and log on to a VM, if there was a local profile, that profile would be deleted and Sally would use the FS Logix profile instead. Now that's great because Sally will have the user experience that she's had on every other machine. This can be bad 
if you're implementing FS logics in an existing environment, because as the name implies, it will delete the local profile. So if you're implementing FS logics in an existing environment, be cautious with this setting. Make sure that your users' data and settings are all backed up into OneDrive or on a file share centrally before you implement this one. But it is a good best practice for all new environments. This next one is called size in megabytes. This refers to new virtual hard drives being created for FS Logic profiles. So if you already have a profile in existence and you set size in megabytes to be whatever it is that you want, it's not going to do anything. This only works on new disks. And the recommended size for this is 30,000 megabytes, which is 30 gigabytes. Now, why 30 gigabytes? This is a good upper limit to set because people hardly ever get there. And you will have a couple users, of course, who have, you know, a profile of 100 gigabytes and they'll have to do maintenance on those guys. But for everybody else, setting it for 30 gigabytes means you can pretty much set it and forget it. Now, some of you might be thinking, I must be out of my mind because if I have 30 gigabytes for every user and I've got 4,000 users and we do the math properly, then it's 30 times 4,000 is 120,000 or 120 terabytes worth of space. See, I can do math unlike in my last video. Now, some people will be very happy to pre-allocate however much space they need and then never worry about it. Other people don't want to do that at all. So there is another setting, and although not technically part of the best practices, but you can implement dynamic disks which means the actual size of every new profile disk you create will be zero, and then it will fill up with space. And if you prefer that approach in your environment, that's great. But it will take a little more math and maintenance just to keep an eye on your file share that you don't run out of space. But either way, it's up to you, I won't judge. Another best practice is that of volume type. So when you create your virtual hard drive, you've basically got two choices. .vhd files or .vhdx files. Now the best practice choice here is .vhdx. For one, it's a newer format. For another one, it allows you more capabilities with PowerShell and maintenance, and you can also implement those dynamic disks. And the last best practice setting we'll talk about today is flip-flop profile directory name. This is to make it easier for you to search for specific profile containers and user folders on your network shares. So the default behavior of FSLogix is to create this long GUID and then attach the username at the end. This flip-flop profile directory name setting will flip-flop it so that it's username first and then the long GUID. And that'll just make things easy for you to find. And there's a whole bunch more inside the FSLogix docs in the resources section below, like I mentioned earlier, so go and check that out. So the important things to remember from today's episode is that you only really need a user profile in WVD, but you should understand the Office profile so you know when it's good to break it out. And you should be using one host pool to one file share for your profiles. Your profiles should not be using concurrent connections. Set up your antivirus exclusions to keep your performance in your environment good. And always configure those best practice settings and make your decision if you want to pre-allocate everything with size in megabytes or use dynamic disks. And in both situations, you should be using .vhdx files and flip-flop that directory name to make things easier to find. And in your new WVD implementations, always use that delete local profile when FSLogix is found, but consider carefully before you implement that in an existing environment. And there's a couple more things that you should always use, like the subscribe button, the like button, the share button. And the more that all of you click on those things, that tells YouTube that you like my content and it should be shared out out with more people, which just helps the Azure Academy to help more of you. But not only that, it also earns you magic bonus points that you can use on the next Azure Academy video, which is right up there, or you can continue with the AZ-140 study guide down here at the bottom. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll catch you in our next episode. Happy learning.